I'm Jan Gordon, and I love this topic on prayer. Uh, it takes us places where we would not go otherwise. Um, I have 11 kids, and there's no way <laughs> without prayer that um, we would have been able to raise them. So I'm really excited about sharing uh, just the thoughts that are actually on this page. Um, I was reading the other day um, that when we pray, we want to be careful not to just pray with our mind, because we'll pray what's reasonable, but if we're praying in the spirit, we'll pray what's unreasonable. And so that takes us, like I was saying, to new places, your way is better. Um, as we're praying, I feel like God gives us things that we may not think of, we may not have ever dreamed of, but all of a sudden we're able to pray for things that God's wanting to do. Uh, so prayer being the backbone of fulfilling God's will, I feel like, you know, we could go to ODU campus every day, but if we had not begun with prayer and really allowed His Spirit to fill us and to prepare the way that the work, well, the work would not get done <laughs> like He wants it. He wants to fulfill our prayers and answer them and so I'm, I'm super excited to be praying with you guys this summer and be believing God for things that we have no idea of what he wants to do and what people, um, whose lives he wants to change. Uh, so anyway, this starts out with, um, I'm going to pray to start us out. So Father, we just thank you so much that when we come to you, you hear us, you answer us, Lord. And we want to fulfill our desires, Lord. We want your desires. Thank you for giving us um, just this opportunity to uh, know you in this way, to hear from you, uh, for your spirit to speak to us. But thank you that you want us to um, labor in this area. You want us to see it as uh, more important than just talking with people. Even. <coughs> Oh, Lord, it's so much more important to talk to you before we talk to men and to talk to men about you, Lord. Um, so, Lord, may that be where we place more effort and more work um, before we um, head out to campus or before we talk to people. I pray that you use this in our lives, Lord, to excite us and um, deepen our desire to pray and be in front of you, Lord. Uh, thank you for your word that teaches and instructs us. So, yeah, so it says, all movements and revivals of God's Spirit have two practices in common. Uh, one being abiding prayer and the other abundant gospel sharing. And both of those are labors. <laughs> you know, we pray for sending out labors. And um, prayer is laboring. It's just, they're hand in hand in uh, and seeing the work accomplished. So, um, I was just curious, um, here it says, what are some verses or passages from Scripture that motivate you to pray? I thought it would be fun just to hear some of your verses that you think, yes, I need to pray because this is what God says. And so, maybe you can just shout out, um, if you can think of it right off, a shout out a few verses that you hold on to that motivate you to pray. Um, yeah, be crying out to the Lord. I'll just share one. In Psalm 107, uh, verse 23, this says that Moses bridged the gap. And I think it was his relationship with, uh, with God, his talking to God. He bridged the gap between these sinners and, <laughs> and God. And um, that's what I want to do. I want to bridge a gap. You know, people aren't pursuing him. I want to be praying for them. Anyway, anybody else? James 5.16. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man accomplishes much. James 5.16. Jeremiah 33.3. Call on me and I will show you great mighty things that you do not know. <clears throat> Psalm 27, verse 8. You have said, seek my face. My heart says to you, your face, Lord, do I see? <clears throat> John 15, 7 and 8. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourself to be my disciple. 1 Peter 5, 16. Love 
Anybody else? They're going to give us some here too. They might be one of theirs. But. Be anxious for nothing but in everything, with prayer and supplication, make your request known to God. And the peace of God will pass all understanding, will guard your heart and mind. I don't know for sure. Philippians 4 6. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's good to have those promises in the back of your mind just to be able to motivate you. It's like, oh, that's right, God can answer this. I'm just going to pray. <laughs> I'm going to give it back to Him and. It'll release that anxiety, give you peace. Um, it makes you hold fast. There's a verse in Hebrews, I think it's 4 2, it says that they did not apply faith when they heard the gospel. But because they didn't apply faith, they didn't get to experience um, the answer. I might be taking a little out of context there, but to me, it's like if you're applying faith to something, you'll get to see something. If you're not, you're not going to see it. <laughs> and so, yeah. Um, yeah, in Psalm 65, 5, by awesome deeds you answer us in your righteousness, O God of our salvation. Um, the end of all things is, is near. Be of sound judgment, sober of spirit for the purpose of prayer. It's like the end of all things is near. We need to, yeah, be ready. So, um, can I have four uh, people? I'm just going to have them read these first four verses. So, raise your hand and I'll, for okay, number one. Okay, Romans, number two, uh, Mark 9, number three, Santi, and number four, Jake. Okay, go ahead. And, and then, why is prayer difficult? After you read it, just uh, mention why it's difficult. Okay. Romans eight twenty six. 26. Uh, likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know what to pray for as we ought. But the Spirit itself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. Why it's for difficult, uh, sometimes we don't know what to say. We don't know, we don't know how to pray. Yeah, yeah we're weak. We don't know how to pray. Yeah. Okay, Mark 9. And it was often cast, and it oft, had, has often cast him into fire and into water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. And Jesus said to him, If you can, all things are possible for one who believes. Immediately the father of the child cried out and said, I believe, help my unbelief. So our weakness would be... That we can't believe. Yeah, we believe. unbelief, yeah. yeah. Okay, Matthew 26. Watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, a second time, he went away and prayed, saying... Oh, my Father, if this cup cannot pass away from me unless I drink it, your will be done. And he came and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. So it's difficult because sometimes my flesh or too tired or something. I'll just do that instead of praying. Yeah. Okay. All right. Luke 11. He was praying in a certain place, and when he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John also taught his disciples. And he said to them, Whenever you pray, say, Father, your name be honored as holy, your kingdom come. And I guess the reason there is we don't know how, or we like not how. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, so teach us. <laughs> we don't know how. Good. Okay, so, um, yeah, when you think of prayer, I know for me, I just, all of a sudden I feel tired. There's just a real, <laughs> there's a lot of things that come at us when prayer is mentioned. And and then it's quadrupled when fasting is mentioned. But it's amazing the warfare that comes when we um, think of having prayer time. I, I can't tell you, we do a 908 prayer and I can't tell you how often at 905 I'm just like, so tough. <laughs> then I, at the end at 9.38, and then I kind of revived, and I'm like, what was that? <laughs> but anyway, yeah, our flesh is weak. Okay, so prayer is essential for us. So these next seven things, you're going to do the same thing. Um, I was going to read a quote, um, and as we, we're going to read through what prayer is essential for, I'm going to have whoever's reading that mention that same thing. But I was reading... Um, 
Ian Bounds, he's written, um, I think it's called Power of Prayer. And that's like such a good book to read. It, you realize like the benefits of that reading. And there's another book I like, it's called, um, I think it's, um, is it Praying for, Effectively for the Lost? But it goes into all the reasons why we should pray for the lost and all the, all the verses that go into um, the things that are keeping them from being saved. So you can pray through those things that they just mentioned all the verses. Um, but anyway, here it says, this is Ian Bounds. He says, uh, the men who have done the most for God in this world have been early on their knees. He who fritters in away the early morning, its opportunity and freshness, in other pursuits than seeking God will make poor headway seeking him the rest of the day. If God is not first in our thoughts and efforts in the morning, he will be in the last place of the remainder of the day. Oh, that was an interesting quote. Okay, so seven people uh, for these next seven verses. Okay, so number one, number two, number three, four, five, six, seven, okay, that's it. Just remember your number. <laughs> okay, so number one. Pray then like this. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver <clears throat> us from evil. For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their trespasses, Neither will your father forgive your trespasses. What do you feel like the Lord's Prayer is essential for? Forgiveness. Forgiveness. Yeah, being ready to forgive others and know you're forgiven. Yeah. What else? Um, in verse 15 it says, Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Yeah, you're praying for strength to uh, keep away from evil. What else? An eternal mindset for the day. Yeah, it's um, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in my life or in so and so's life. I like adding that part. Um, oh yeah, and I like thinking of it in in a way uh, where you're kind of living a palace life, like you're living in a palace, and how would you respond or how would you act? Uh, what would you do if you realized you were in this kingdom, living in this palace, and you're coming to your father, our father, you know, who are in heaven. You know, he wants a relationship with you. He wants to connect with you. Hallowed be your name. There's a holy reverence for God. Um, and I like thinking of all his names in that part. And just really, yeah, considering who he is. <laughs> Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in my life today. Uh, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in my husband's life, in my children's lives. Um, just opens up so much. And I was reading this quote or, about um, give us this day our daily bread. It's like when we pray, give us this day our daily bread, we're in, we are, in a measure, shutting tomorrow out of our prayer. We do not live in tomorrow, but in today. We do not seek tomorrow's grace or tomorrow's bread. They thrive best and get most out of life who live in the present. They pray best who pray for today's needs, not for tomorrow's, which may render our prayers unnecessary and redundant, but not existing at all. In other words, we might be anxious about tomorrow and all these things, but he's saying like in those anxieties may not have been even necessary. But we, we do want God to meet us today, and that's by the imbalance as well. But I think just um, that Lord's Prayer is just a connection with God. It's uh, putting all things in his court, yeah, to walk in his kingdom halls with him. Okay, Ephesians, number two. Ephesians 6, 18 and 19 says, And pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. Pray also for me that whenever I open my mouth, 
words may be given to me so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel. So pray to rely on God to speak what he has for the people we share with. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For you with the words that come out of your mouth. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This is pray at all times in the spirit. And so you're opening up from reasonable to unreasonable. <laughs> Uh, you'll, you might be saying things that only he would be able to say. Mm-hmm. And then with all perseverance and petition for all the saints, is that that one? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so there's a lot, a lot of... I mean, when you think of perseverance, I mean, you're a runner, right? You're a soccer player, you know, you persevere and it's not easy, it's not fun sometimes. And petition, so, you know, you're writing things down or um, coming before the Lord for, for your friends, for the saints. Yeah. Remembering to uphold our, like our churches, our house churches, you know, just, yeah, it's essential for the people's lives that we're involved in. Okay, number three. Uh, Second Corinthians uh, 4 4. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ who is the image of God. So yeah, I think that is prayer for uh, the eyes of those who are spiritually blinded by Satan. Um, yeah, throughout the entire world. <coughs> yeah. And even for ourselves as well, because sometimes they can blind us in certain yeah. situations. Yeah. Yeah. So. yeah, so we're praying for unbelievers. And yeah. yeah, the veil lifted, the blinders lifted, the lies not revealed. Yeah. Good. Number four. John 16, 7 through 11. But in fact, it is best for you that I go away, because if I don't, the advocate won't come. If I do go away, then I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world of its sin and God's righteousness and of the coming judgment. The world's sin is that it refuses to believe in me. Righteousness is a available because I go to the Father and you will see more you will see me no more judgment will come because the ruler of this world has already been judged so pray for the advocate to come Mm. and convict the world of its sin yeah the true conviction to happen when we're sharing with them or when they're just you know, whatever they are reading or seeing, that God will convict them of their sin. Yeah. Yeah, and of God's holiness and His judgment to come. Um, so essential for conviction. Luke 10 to. The harvest, and He said to them, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into His harvest. So, pray is essential to, for God to raise and send the laborers. Isn't that an amazing thought that the Lord put that in our court to pray for? <laughs> Sometimes I'm kind of blown away that we're supposed to pray for laborers. You know, where I don't know, I feel like He just bring us laborers, but He's like, or instead of praying for laborers, pray for those who get saved, to get saved. But He's telling us to pray for the laborer <laughs> and for more people to be raised up to come alongside. And then when they do, it's like, Oh, that is an answer to prayer. Look at all these people here. You know, who would have thought two years ago or three years ago, you guys in college, you know, you, you probably didn't think that you'd be in a summer league <laughs> sharing the gospel every day. <laughs> I thought. So don't you wonder who was praying for you? <laughs> okay, Second Chronicles 7, 13 and 14. I got it. <clears throat> when I shut up the heavens so that there is no rain, or command the locusts to devour the land, or send pestilence among my people, if my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. I'd say prayer is uh, essential for healing and forgiveness and to mm-hmm. receive from God. Yeah, yeah, he wants us to. To come to him, so I didn't. I know in 2020, I just remember thinking a lot about that verse and the healing of the land. Like we need to repent as 
as a world. <laughs> Not just a country, it was like the whole world. So, uh, Matthew 26, 41. Walk and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit in me is willing, the flesh is weak. Yeah, so that temptation. And one other one I wanted to add is um, prayer was essential for is John 16, uh, 23 and 24. That says, um, in that day, you will not question me about anything. Truly, truly, I said, if you ask the Father for anything in my name, he will give it to you. Until now, you've asked for nothing in my name. Ask and you will receive so that your joy may be, may be made full. I was thinking, you know, prayer is essential for joy. <laughs> Just that it would be made full. I think that's a cool promise. So, I thought we would take, like, um, I want to see how fast you guys can be. Well, actually, how about each table take a different one? Church. Church? <laughs> okay, so this table is going to do number one. Number two? Number three? Huh? Sorry. I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> one, two, you guys number three, four, five, six, seven. No, six. Six. <laughs> you guys are six. You guys can both be six. Wait a minute. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. <laughs> and so this take like like seven minutes to go through yours. Maybe five minutes. Five minutes. And then we'll come back and answer this. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and fill in the answers. So starting here uh, with Acts 1, 4 through 14, who prayed and what was the result? A lot of people. <laughs> Peter, John, James, Andrew, Philip, Thomas, Solomon, Matthew, <laughs> Simon, Judas, Mary, Mother Jesus, and Jesus' brothers. Disciples and Jesus' family and yeah. women. <laughs> yeah. And what was the result? Oh, we talked about how they became united, and the context is that this is right after Jesus ascended into heaven. So we concluded they had just heard the Great Commission and were empowering each other to follow. And Good. So they were more united than they were empowered for the Great Commission. All right, how about the next one, Acts 4, 21 through 31? Who prayed? Um, Peter and John's companions. Peter and John's companions. And then what was the result of their prayer? Um, the room filled with boldness by the Holy Spirit. All right, boldness by the Holy Spirit. Acts 9, 3 through 18. Who prayed? Saul. Saul prayed. And the result? Sight was regained. And salvation? Yeah, it's kind of turned around. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Okay. Okay, Acts 10, 1 through 23. Who prayed? Mm -hmm. Cornelius <coughs> and Peter? Yes. And the result? They, were, they both had a vision and were directed by the Holy Spirit. Good, so they got direction. Yeah, they got direction. Good. And then Acts 12. This week, you guys? Uh, uh, the church prayed. The church? All right, Peter got out of jail. <laughs> Good. And then Acts 13. We were members of the Church of Antioch, and teachers, prophets, and a list of names here, of six names. Uh, they were directed by the Holy Spirit to set aside Barnabas and Saul for the work that the Lord had for them. All right, so they sent out some people on mission. Good. Good, 
So a lot can happen. Unity, boldness of the spirit, um, healing and salvation, direction for future, getting out of jail free. <laughs> so yeah, a lot of things happen um, when we pray. I was just thinking, um, sometimes taking prayer to a real practical level is helpful. Um, one practical I was thinking about this summer was, um, what do you want to be believing God for? And so to maybe even have something that you're praying on a daily basis. I, I know for me, like I like making a prayer list for me, and I like starting out. And so in this case, I would start out, as a linker, I want to believe God for, and it could be personal things, it could be um, your what's going to happen in your, with your housemates, with um, the link team in general, the time of reaching, like maybe you have 10 things you believe in God for. As a linker, I want to believe God that or for, and then share it with your house and you know we can be praying for one another that way I, I think it's good to have some solid things you believe in God for and uh, yeah not, God wants us to be specific and and uh, unreasonable so I was, we are going to touch on the next page I'm going to have you do um, the on the fasting, prayer and fasting is the next page. Um, we talk about prayer and fasting, Matt and I do, that it's a muscle to be exercised. Um, it's not an easy thing to do. We enjoy our food. We enjoy um, just the, we know, in four, six hours, or eat again, or um, it's available. And I think, you know, there's, spirit, okay, this starts out, you know, there's spiritual disciplines we all do. You know, maintenance disciplines, quiet time, prayer, memory, uh, sharing the gospel. Um, if I think of other, you know, maintenance disciplines as a Christian. Um, but we, we try to practice those and make goals about them. Um, and I think it's good to have a goal for fasting. And, and I, think, I think for years, um, fasting to me has been a... Well, it's, it is a hump. It's, it's hard to get to that point where it's exciting. or um, And, you know, so I started taking little steps. Uh, okay, I'm going to skip this meal. And I'm going to be praying for, you know, I have things to pray for. And I think the idea is, is that there is something that you're praying to see God move in, in someone's life. And it becomes more alive also, if that is your motivation. Maybe someone is struggling with drugs, maybe someone's struggling with their, um, how they see themselves, maybe, you know, there's just some things that, a besetting sin, <laughs> that they can't move fast, or past, <laughs> so you, you might fast for them, um, to help move past that besetting sin that has been hard for them to move out of. Um, so, I was thinking as a table, um, we have just a few more minutes. Um, we only have like six minutes. But I thought for five, five of those six minutes, um, we're going to read Isaiah 58, 1 through 14. And I want you to write down all the benefits of fasting that you can. And then at the end, we'll just list them up here for Isaiah 58. So... Um, Isaiah 58, 1 through 14. And we'll, we'll play the game like Boggle. If, if you have the same one that someone else had, you cross it out. You know, and whoever has the most left that didn't get crossed out wins the game type thing. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so. So I hope you're looking at the effects of fasting. What's going to happen when you fast? Or what can happen when you fast? So, yeah. 
So if there's some specific things yeah. that it does, is this not the fast which I choose? What's it going to do? So you guys about ready? Okay. So let's start naming some things that can happen when we're fasting. What are some of these benefits? To receive guidance? Delight in the Lord. Delight in the Lord. Healing. Healing. Humble yourself. Humility. Loosen the bonds of wickedness. Yes. Strength. Strength. Restoration. Restoration. Uh, answered prayer. Yes, answered prayer. <coughs> undo burden. I'm sorry. Undo burden. Right. To undo heavy burdens. In other words, to solve problems, inviting the Holy Spirit's aid in lifting loads and overcoming barriers that keep ourselves and our loved ones from walking joyfully with the Lord. Reveals hypocrisy. Reveals hypocrisy. So it's running out of time. I'm going to list some of these that I have written down because I think it's kind of encouraging just to see them as a whole. Okay, so I'll just go down. Okay, the, to loosen bonds of wickedness, in other words, addictions to sins, to undo heavy burdens, to solve the problems by inviting the Holy Spirit to lift the load, to let the oppressed go free, both physically and spiritually, to let the oppressed go free, to break every yoke, in other words, conquering the mental and emotional problems that would control our lives and returning to the control of the Lord. So breaking every yoke. To give bread to the hungry and provide the poor with housing. To allow the people's light to break forth like the morning, bringing clearer perspective and insight as we make crucial decisions. To cause their health to spring forth speedily to gain a healthier life for healing. To cause their righteousness to go before them, that our testimonies and influence for Jesus will be enhanced by others, and to cause the glory of the Lord to be their reward, that the glory of the Lord will protect us from the evil one. I think it's good to realize, like, there, there are real reasons we fast. There's a lot of things holding people back, barriers and yokes they're carrying and addictions. And, and so, if we have that in the back of our mind, it's easier to let go of a meal, or two meals, three meals, days, you know? And so, so what are we going to do with this? Now that we know a little bit about fasting, and I would challenge you to set a goal for the summer. What if it was two meals a week? Or what if it was, okay, I'm going to fast two days in the middle of the summer. Or what if it was... You know, I want to fast every Monday. Or I want to fast. I don't know. Before the Lord, ask the Lord what He might want you to do. We're here to break chains. We're here to loosen the bonds. <laughs> you know, we're here to help people gain salvation. What can we do? And we did have a budget cut. So. <laughs> no. <laughs> Anyway, so I'm going <laughs> to so close this in prayer. <laughs> so, Heavenly Father, I thank you for um, victory that you give us through prayer, through fasting. Lord, you give us ways out. You give us new ways. You change things, Lord. You make the dry land and the rivers. Lord, you... Um, yeah, you make a way where there was no way. Lord, we want to be a part of that and all you're doing. God, thank you for this opportunity to pray, to fast, to uh, be a part of understanding and knowing you and your will better.